Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course, Power Plant System Engineering, Module Number Two, that is Vapor Power System Part Three. In today's lecture, our main focus would be on steam condenser. So, the under this heading, we will try to discuss the following components, that is. Condensate and feed power systems. Then we'll talk about two types of condenser, like one is direct contact type, other is the surface condensers. So both the uh, condensers will be discussed exhaustively in this lecture. But uh, before you enter into those condenser details, let us try to understand the first basic need. What we call as a condensate and feed water systems. So, if you look at this particular diagram or thermal circuits, which consists of uh, boiler, turbine, condenser, and pump. In fact, this thermal circuit we discussed in one of the earlier lectures, that is beginning of uh, module two. So, on, on for this thermal circuit. Our main target that we are going into details of this condenser unit. So, why do you require this condenser units? That is mainly because, if you recall this TS diagram, that is temperature entropy diagrams, for uh, uh, based on Rankine cycle of uh, steam power systems, what we see is that the turbine inlet condition is at state one. And this steam uh, expands in the turbine, and finally it comes to the state two. So the ex after the expansion of the uh, steam in the turbine, it reaches to the state two. Now while reaching its state two, the steam condition is either a superheated region or in the liquid vapor region. So, but this steam has to Release the heat in a unit, what is called as condensers. Now, the uh, another essential requirement is that more and more you can expand in the turbine, it is then the output from the turbine will be higher, and that is possible if we operate the condenser at lowest possible pressure. So, what does this mean that? During the expansion process from one to two, one can stop this expansion process at any intermediate points on this diagram. But the uh, lowest possible point will yield maximum turbine output. So, in other words, if a condenser is operated at the lower pressure, then work output or enthalpy difference that is between H1 and H2 will be increasing. So, that is the reasons we require this condenser to operate at very low pressures. Second requirement of the condenser in the steam power plant is that, that uh, this uh, uh, conden from the output from the condenser is again fed to the pump and it require it gives necessary uh, feed water to the boiler. So, that is the reason we also require a feed pump that, sub, that takes the water from this outlet of the condenser or you call this as a condensate and then it, it is given to the uh, pump for a higher pressure. Uh, the pressure in the water reaches to the boiler pressures. So, this, this is the main uh, requirement. Another important point here is that once this the outlet from the condenser is usually called as condensate, but feed water, feed water is the another term that con this condenser has to also supply required amount of feed water to the pump. So, that is what two things are uh, coupled together when dealing with the condensers, but however, we are going to treat them separately. So, in this lecture, we will mainly focus on the primary part that is condensers. In the subsequent lecture, we will talk about feed water systems. What does this mean for feed water systems? Because the feed water can come from variety ends, one can come from the turbine end, one can get from the condenser end, 
So, that is the that part will be discussed in the separate lecture. But our main role in this lecture is that we are going to deal with the important component that is condenser. Its main role is to condensate the exhaust from the turbine to recover high quality of feed water for reuse in the cycle. As you can see uh, the at state 3 the uh, condensate or the high quality feed water gets circulated in the cycle. The most important part is that turbine work is higher when the condenser is operated at lower pressure. And mostly uh, we say that if you can operate the condenser pressure mostly in the vacuum then we can maximize the enthalpy output. So, some of the additional requirement for the condenser is that by lowering the back pressure in the condenser by few unit, it gives additional uh, advantage of increasing work output from the turbine, plant efficiency, of course, it is it also it gives reduction in the steam flow. So, the, uh, and thermodynamically it is also important to use the lowest cooling water that are available for use. For example, to get this heat out from the turbine uh, exhaust, what we require is that we require the cooling water to get circulated in the condenser. So, in other words it means that when you take this inlet temperature of the cooling water, it should be at par with the water availability at that location where the condenser is installed. The main purpose of feed water is to improve this cycle, cycle efficiency by heating the condensate to 200 to 250 degree centigrade. So, in the later point of these things we will say that when you take out the condensate I mean we do not uh, really bring back to atmospheric temperature rather that condensate we try to leave them at around 200 to 250 degree centigrade. So, that at the entry to the boiler uh, it is uh, the boiler load will come down. If you allow the condensate or feed water at this 200 to 250 degree centigrade and uh, then supply the water before returning to the steam generator. Then these feed waters are mainly uh, two types one is direct uh, uh, close type and open type we will talk later uh, in the next lecture. But our main target is that we have to uh, very basic point is that we have to leak into the steam condenser unit and this steam condenser unit should operate much below the atmospheric pressures. For example, we should uh, at least 40 degree centigrade that is normal temperature and at that 40 degree centigrade the saturation pressure or condenser pressure we normally call as. Uh, the saturation pressure at 40 degree centigrade we call this as a condenser pressure and that is typically 0.074 bar. So, this is the standard uh, way that all the steam turbine operate and one must understand is that your atmospheric pressure is much much above this condenser pressure. So, that is the reason we say that always uh, vacuum condition is maintained in the condenser. Then let us see the uh, types of condenser there are essentially there are two types of condenser one is direct contact type other is surface condenser. So, what we see in the direct con uh, condenser type here the both uh, the cooling water and the condensate they are allowed to mix whereas, in a surface condenser these two uh, fluids are treated as two different entities. For example, normally the exhaust from the turbine is either uh, superheated steam or it is like the liquid vapor region or uh, mixed region uh, steam with desirable quality of about 80 to 90 percent. So, in a direct condenser what we do is that we do not restrict the mixing of stream. What it means is that if you look at this figure the exhaust from the turbine is at state 2 and the water that comes uh, from to into enters into the uh, or circulating water that enters to the condenser is at state 5 and both are allowed to mix in the condenser and the mixer is uh, leaves at state 3. 
So, this is what we call as a direct contact type thing that means two fluids that enters into the condenser they mix and the resultant stream comes out as a condenser. But whereas in a surface condenser type which normally most of the modern power plant use they use a cell and tube type heat exchanger. What you see is that you have a turbine exhaust here. So, the turbine exhaust comes uh, in the steam dome which is in these locations and this is normally enters to the cell side that means this dome is connected to the cell and entire cell is occupied with this turbine exhaust. But what we do is that we do not allow the circulating wa water to mix with the steam. So, in that case what should you do that we have some uh, inlet water temperature segment which enters and then they continuously uh, move in this condenser uh, in a um, uh, multiple times. So, we call this as a single pass, two pass, three pass or any number of passes so that the entire heat which is available at the exhaust of the steam from the turbine gets trapped by this circulating water. That means, at the end our outlet temperature of the circulate reaches to a maximum value. So, that is the reason we ensure that the water uh, passes through multiple tube sheets and we call them as a 2 pass, 3 pass, 4 pass like, like that. So, in that sense we can use the maximum utilization of heat while steam releases heat to the cooling water. So, the surface condenser are essentially the cell and tube type of heat exchanger in which the primary heat transfer mechanisms are condensing the saturated steam outside the tubes and the forced convection heating of the circulating water inside the tubes. So, the majority of the power plant use the surface condenser because effectiveness of heat transfer becomes higher. Now, let us try to understand both the steam condensers uh, separately. So, first let us start with a direct contact type steam condenser. In the one of the variant, the direct contact type condenser, we call this as a spray condenser. So, the spray condenser uses a dry cooling tower and it takes all kind of it is a cooling tower that that is not nothing but it is a, um, a water reservoir that stores water at normal room temperature or atmospheric temperatures and it supplies the water to the condenser unit. Now, during its supply it water is sprayed inside the condenser uh, from the top and at the same time we also allow the turbine exhaust to pass through this medium and in through this process uh, we have a steam, we have a water and the mixing of both steam and water takes place and during this uh, at the end of these things most of the uh, steam that releases the heat to this water and the resultant part which is uh, collected as state 3 and called as condensate and then it is fed to the feed pump. Now, here at point 3 the uh, there are two segments one goes at a at state 4 other again return back to the cooling tower at state 5. So, as you can see here from uh, we are now after the turbine exist we are now at point th state point 2 and here the state at the state point 2 it is a uh, thermodynamic state where the quality of the steam is around 85 to 90 percent. So, from 2 to 3 that happens in a condenser. So, through this process of heat release the vapor becomes liquid at that saturation pressure and temperature and we reach at the state 3 that is condensate which is collected at the out of um, from the outlet of the condenser unit. Now, at 3 some of these things that water has to be um, pumped into this. So, basically one part goes to state 4, other part we can leave it to state 5, state 5 means somewhere here that means we can release that to uh, further lower temperature because this is about 40 degree centigrade and state 5 is normally uh, close to 
uh, water temperature which is available for use in the cooling tower around 15 to 20 degree centigrade. So, this is for the lower temperatures. So, in other words that is that means one unit uh, that is so uh, and that same water is again enters into the condensing unit. Now, here most important thing that we need to find out is the uh, mass uh, flow of, uh, of water requirement for a given quantity of steam. So, that part we want to calculate and that is called as circulating water uh, to steam flow rate, ratio of circulating water to the steam flow rate. And this is from this thing what, what we can understand is that we can frame mass balance equation and energy balance equations for this spray type condensers. And here we can see that m 2 dot which is the exhaust from the turbine is equal to m 2 4 dot which normally leaves. Second thing at if you very particular for the condenser we can see that m 3 dot is equal to m 2 dot plus m 2 5 this is mass balance and energy balance for this condenser can be written as m 2 dot h 2 plus m dot 5 h 5 is equal to m, m dot 3 h 3. Now, from these two equations we can find a ratio and what is called as most important uh, ratio that is ratio of circulating water circulating cooling water to the steam flow which means that for a given unit of steam flow what is the requirement of cooling water and this is the most vital part for the and that decides the load of the condensers and based on that load of the condenser all other parameters like how many number of tubes, what is the number of pass required, how many passes we need to do, then further what is the diameter of this uh, outer diameter and inner diameter of the tube all these things can be design. The next important uh, uh, part uh, or segment for direct contact condenser is a barometric condenser. So, normally uh, if you look at the previous spray type condenser they use pump. Now, in order to replace this pump what we initially people have thought of putting a tail pipe of certain height and this tail pipe uh, tries to replace the requirement for, for the pump. So, necessary pressure difference is achieved by using a tail pipe and this tail pipe has is sufficiently high and we take the advantage of barometric height which, which is h uh, to take care about the pressure difference. And this pressure differential that is rho g h is nothing but uh, atmospheric pressure minus condenser pressure difference plus it has to um, also take care the frictional pressure drop in this pipe and that frictional pressure drop is related to the friction factor uh, height and diameter of the pipe velocity of the flow in the pipe so all these things uh, we can uh, we know so that we can calculate what is the pressure differential based on this height can be designed and this is one part second thing is that here this cooling tower uh, uh, arrangement is like a baffles that means there are multiple number of baffles so the water is continuously gets in contact with the exhaust of the turbine another important aspect of uh, this uh, thing is that non condensables so for example water which are condensed they goes out of this uh, through this tail pipe and whatever non condensables they have to taken back through a steam jet air ejector system so uh, these are the, uh, what we call as non unwanted parts for the as far as the condenser requirement is concerned and the role of this tail pipe of this mixture is to compress the mixture to atmospheric pressure in the hot well by virtue of static heat and thus it replaces the need of the pump. This is one uh, aspect uh, what we call as barometric condenser and here also both exist from the turbine and the cooling water they are allowed to mix. Now, another design of jet pipe condenser uh, another design of this uh, barometric condenser is preferred 
because many a times we also require a very long pipe because the pipe of constant length and diameter um, uh, we require long pipes. So, that variations uh, can be regulated by increase by keeping a diffuser type design in the tailpipe. So, essentially the tailpipe is replaced with a diffuser, diffuser type designs that involves a throat which is a minimum area sections and uh, side by side this geometry of the shape is a kind of a diffuser where the, uh, the, the water gets uh, through this process we get desired pressure difference across this diffuser. So, here also the cooling water and turbine exhaust they are allowed to mix and in a cascade arrangement so that proper mixing is possi possible. So, we, we require various cascades to enhance the heat transfer from the uh, turbine exhaust to the cooling water. So, here also there are provisions that we must use the steam jet air ejector to remove the con unwanted condensable non condensable gases. Now, if you just compare both barometric and jet type condensers, they are almost similar designs, but very basic difference is that the tailpipe requirement of uh, barometric uh, condenser is, uh, is closed not less than 10 meters. So, that length is gets reduced if you go for a jet type of condenser. Now, we will move on to next type of uh, um, condenser which are called as surface condensers. So, I mentioned earlier the surface condensers are cell and tube type heat exchangers in which the primary heat transfer mechanisms are condensing the saturated steam on the outside of the tubes and force convection heating of the circulated water inside the tube. Here we see that there is a cell, the cell means it contains the steam dome and ent entire unit we have the steam, but the water enters into the condenser through multiple tube sheets and the through this process the condensate that means the heat transfer takes place. So, steam gets condenses and it is the condensate is collected in the hot well which is below the cell. So, in this process we get much more or enhanced heat transfer or the mechanism of giving high quality circulating water to the boiler. So, that is the advantage of the uh, surface condensers. So, there are some standard uh, informations for steam condensers that is when the steam condensates its volume decreases. So, that means, uh, we have very few tubes smaller passes to drain the water into the hot well and this hot well receives the condensate that acts as a reservoir and it is with a capacity equal to the total condensate flow rate for a particular time. And for this uh, surface condensers normally copper tubes of uh, with diameter 1 to 3 uh, millimeter is used and length uh, sorry 1 to 3 meter is used and their length is typically 25 meter uh, which are preferred for a large scale power plants. Number of passes determines the size and effectiveness of condenser. So, which means that enhanced heat transfer is possible if you allow the steam to uh, move inside the condenser in multiple times and that word we call it as a pass. So, as you can see for a given water velocity if you try to link the how much pressure drop takes place which you can see that two things that means for a given flow rate of inlet velocity of water which is at this location, let us say it is 2 meter per second and if you go for two pass type of uh, system that means you allow the water 
to pass in the to circulate two times then we have a larger pressure drop. So, that means, uh, for two pass systems we have a larger pressure drop. Second thing is that when you increase the number of passes we will land up having higher pressure drop. That means, higher pressure drop means more effectiveness of the condenser and through this process the condenser size also will gets reduced. In other words, it means single pass condenser will have a larger size than that of a, a two pass condenser. A single pass condenser with same number of tube and size with same water velocity requires twice the water flow. So, it results half of the temperature rise and half lower condenser pressures. So, that is the reason in many cases most power plants prefer single power condenser when the requirement of thermal pollution is the essential. But in terms of water requirement and pumping requirement, we generally prefer two pass condensers because the single pass condensers involves higher cost. So, a balanced approach in number of passes essentially decides the size and cost of the condenser. The another important aspect of this surface condenser uh, we are now going to see, see called as they are called as deaeration, deaerator. So, what it means is that in a steam and vapor fire power cycles it is important to remove non condensable gases that gets accumulated in the systems. We have been keeping on uh, emphasizing the fact that there are non condensables gases that comes out that is that, that which are non avoidable at the turbine exhaust. So, those non condensable gases has to be relieved or released and what are they these non condensable gases they are nothing but the mostly air that leaks from the atmosphere at various portion of the cycle number one. Number two there could be decomposition of water that is hydrogen and oxygen and that they are mostly predominant in the nuclear power plants. So, these things has to be removed in the condenser because why have they have to removed because the presence of those ga gases adds partial pressures and this uh, partial pressure uh, through this and when they have their own partial pressures. So, that way the total pressure of the system increases this one this first demerit of these non condensable gases. Second demerit is that the blanket of heat transfer uh, surfaces that means, uh, these uh, non condensable gases creates a kind of insulation blanket on the heat transfer sur surfaces and thereby it decreases the overall condensing heat transfer coefficients. So, that is the reason these non condensable gases has to be removed. Another thing is that there are uh, if there are chemical uh, presence in the uh, non condensable gases then they can add to corrosion. For example, presence of oxygen add corrosion to heat transfer surfaces. When there is a corrosion the overall heat transfer coefficient drops and then the purpose of, uh, of the condenser load also uh, performance of the condenser will drop down. So, many a times most of the fossil power plant requires the guaranteed oxygen concentration should be less than 0 0.005 centimeter cube per liter. So, essentially the role of oxygen in a condenser has to be is very significant because it adds corrosion, it adds it drops overall heat transfer coefficients uh, in passively and that and they have their own partial pressures. To suppress all the of the things we require a additional unit that is called de and that is normally used in the surface condensers.
then another study that we are going to do because most of the steam power systems they use surface condensers. So, we will try to focus our attentions some of the important parameters and mainly we call, call this as a heat transfer analysis. And this heat transfer analysis requires the knowledge of the condensing steam how it takes place. So, for example, if you, if you see here we have two streams one is exhaust from the turbine that enters through the steam dome into the cell other is the cooling water that enters at the inlet and comes in the outlet. And since the turbine exhaust which is a, 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 is a um, close to the uh, saturated vapor steam uh, and in, in, inside the condenser its role is that means it is condenses that means there is no drop no change in the temperature rather there is a release of latent heat of vaporization for the steam. So, this heat is being taken away by this water. So, if you have inlet temperature 1, so it is when it heat takes away its temperature at state 2 increases. So, thermodynamically uh, or you can say through heat transfer if you can say the temperature versus heat transfer path length either you take in terms of area or length then we have two temperature differences one is delta T i at the inlet. So, it is essentially the arrangement of a counter flow in which one fluid is condensing other fluid is temperature is increasing. So, one temperature is delta T i at the inlet other temperature is delta T o at the outlet and this delta T o is normally for the condenser viewpoint we call this as a mainly surface condensers we call this as a terminal temperature difference. So, this parameter is very vital because that adds to the cost sizing and performance of the condenser. So, more and more this temperature difference is that means, if you have a very higher temperature that means, your uh, at the outlet temperature that means, performance of the condenser is very good. So, that is the reason the terminal temperature difference is kept as low as possible and typical number is close to 3 degree centigrade. That means, from the content difference between the steam and the outlet temperature of the circulating water should be in the range of 3 degree centigrade. Second important aspect is that at a given temperature difference at the inlet larger TTD results large LMTD smaller area and there is so that there is an increase in the water flow and because this water temperature rise is reduced. Smaller TTD will result in larger condenser area with reduced water flow and higher exit temperatures. And because of this smaller size that means we that means our design is not perfect. So, we call this as a oversized condensers and it will invite higher capital cost. So, in the condenser design this TTD is very much vital in designing various components of the condensers. Now, to design the various component of condensers we there are some standard calculations and that is supported by uh, heat transfer modeling and this standards involve the heat exchange institute standards for steam surface condensers. So, the equation that is simplified that is we call this as a heat load on the condenser is based on overall heat transfer coefficient u multiplied by area that is the surface area and this area is nothing but your n into pi d 0 into L d 0 is the outer diameter of the tube length is the length, length of the condenser n is the number of tubes that are being used. And this uh, delta T m is the logarithmic mean temperature difference uh, for the condensers that depends on the inlet temperature difference and the outlet temperature difference that is T T d. This is calculated by this parameter delta T m. Now, what is not known to us is that u. Now, this u is a function of various parameters 
and this uh, standard uh, the the proposal or the given by this heat uh, heat exchange standard says that overall heat transfer coefficients can depend on various factors what are the factors first factor is depends on the outer diameter second factor is uh, circulating water inlet temperature third factor is tube material and gauge fourth factor is cleanliness and this is proportional to the square root of velocity so u is equal to c1 c2 c3 c4 square root of v so while if you if you are interested to design a steam condensers then we have to look into all these parameters and then accordingly we can calculate the overall heat transfer coefficients but however in our course our this value will be mostly given for the um, condenser calculations then moving further the next part that we require that how much water is being uh, how much heat is being carried out by the water and that is required with uh, the condenser uh, load that is q and we also require the uh, other important parameter what is the mass flow rate of the circulating water that is nothing but the temperature differential that we are supposed to achieve that is t2 minus t1 and from this we also have the condenser load q another parameter that which is also require here is that pressure drop in the condenser that is delta p rho gs this also can be calculated and typically the inlet temperature of water is kept between 2.1 to 2.5 meter per seconds so these two parameters is also very vital in the designing of a surface condenser now finally uh, this is the overall picture that how surface condenser designs details are taken into account but however other important aspects which is very vital and we are not following in this lecture is that the kind of cooling that happens in the condensers and this is what we call as a film wise condensation in horizontal tubes so we have seen that there are uh, tubes in which the water flows inside and if you take the cross section of this tube where water is gets circulated in the tubes at any particular instant if you see there are water temperature tw and there is another dome which is called as saturation temperature temperature of water because uh, we have outside outside we have steam and inside we have water so there is a layer and we call this as a condensate film and this there is a uh, thickness which is delta which is nothing uh, which which engulfs about the diameter of the tube in which water is there so this particular concept we call this as a film wise condensation uh, that is different part all together in which that also comes in the design of steam steam condensers another kind of uh, um, knowledge that we require in the design of the condenser is heat transfer mechanisms which means conduction through tube walls force convection inside the tube at varying temperatures and then also you need to evaluate heat transfer coefficients as various parts of the condensers that is cell and tube inner and outer surface all these things are required and both of the things Uh, will give you the heat load on the condenser and additionally this heat load must be removed from the uh, by the feed water and that is the reason condensate and feed water are taken together and all non condensables has to be taken out from the condenser unit by a component called as a steam jet air ejector so considering all these things together we can say that heat transfer mechanisms in a condenser is quite complex but what we have presented here is a very simple way so that 
uh, numerical uh, problems can be attempted. So, with this uh, uh, we conclude, but however, before you uh, close this lecture, let us try to understand uh, some of the numerical problems which are part of this lecture. So, the first problem is on surface condenser design and its calculations. So, the problem statement goes like this, the surface condenser receives 240 tons of our uh, of steam at 40 degree centigrade with 88 percent quality. The cooling water enters at 30 degree centigrade and leaves at 38 degree centigrade. The pressure inside the condenser is 0 0.078 bar, velocity of circulating water is 1.6 meter per second. The tubes of the condenser have 25 mm outer diameter and thickness 1.25 mm. We need to find out what is the rate of flow of cooling water, air leakage into the condenser and length and diameter of the tubes. So, essentially we can draw the schematic what we have uh, shown earlier uh, is that we have tubes of that in which water enters and water leaves. The tubes have uh, outer diameter 25 mm, thickness is 1.25 mm. Now, water inlet temperature is 32 degree centigrade outlet temperature is 38 degree centigrade, steam enters at 240 tons per hour and here quality of the steam is 88 percent and this condenser pressure is 0 0.078 bar overall heat transfer coping that means condensation takes place on the surface overall heat transfer co coefficients for this tube is u0 which is 2560 watt per meter square kelvin so this is the problem so we need to require two diagrams first diagrams let us see how that expansion process takes place in the turbine and where we stand so if you say T S diagram there is a dome so the state of the that enters in the condenser at 2 and it leaves at 3 and this temperature is 40 degree centigrade second part is that we also need to look at this how the condensation happens across this heat transfer length. So, if you say temperature versus path length that is A 0 or L in this direction, then steam condenses in this manner. So, this is a counter flow heat exchanger and cooling water temperature increases and this is delta T O or that is T T D and this is delta T I. So, from the data that is given we say this temperature is 32 degree centigrade, this is 38 degree centigrade and condensation takes place at 40 degree centigrade that is T saturated. Okay. So, these three diagrams will give you most of the informations. So, having drawn these diagrams, we will be now able to solve uh, this particular problem. So, let us see the first thing what is x 2 is given as 88 percent 
that is 0 0.88. We also have data at 40 degree centigrades. We can calculate what is the value of HFG that is saturated temperature the steam table. So, HFG value can be noted as 2407 kilojoule per kg and also we have then then we can say what is the condenser load that is H2 minus H3 is equal to X times X2 times HFG. So, both the parameters we know then we will have 2118.2 kilojoule per kg. Once we know then we can perform energy balance for cooling water and condensed steam that is mass of the steam m dot s it, that is condenser load that is H2 minus H3 that is total condenser load and that is taken by mass of this cooling water into CPW TC2 minus TC1. So, we have all the data uh, TC1 32 degree centigrade, TC2 38 degree centigrade, CPW 4.0 187 kilojoule per kg Kelvin that is for water and uh, mass of the steam that is m dot s which is 240 tons per hour that is 240 into 1000 by 3600. So, this value is 66.0. 66 kg per second. So, by inserting this value we get 66.66 into 2118.2 is equal to m dot c which is unknown CPW 4.187 TC2 minus TC1 38 minus 32. So, this will give you m dot c that is equal to rate of mass flow of cooling water that is part A is solved as 5620.5 kg per second. Now, for the second part rate of air leakage into the condenser. So, the rate of air leakage into the condenser if you take this total condenser volume is V and that total volume can be calculated. Is mass of the steam into specific volume of the steam. Now, here we require specific volume of the steam that is V 2 is equal to V f plus x times V f g. Now, at 40 degree centigrade we can say we can calculate what is V 2 0 0.001008 meter cube per kg x is that is x 2 is 0 0.88 and V f g is equal to V f g is equal to 19.544 meter cube per kg. So, this data we get from the steam table. So, from this we can calculate what is V 2 is equal to 17.2 meter cube per kg. So, we also have uh, mass of the steam that is m dot s already calculated 66.66 kg per second. Then we can use the uh, equations uh, ideal gas equations P 
P A R because you need to find out what is the air leakage into B is equal to M dot A R which is we need to find out into R A R into T. Now, next question is that what is this P A A R? Now, this condenser operates at pressure total pressure which consists of saturated pressure plus air pressure which is already existing in this condenser. So, that value is 0 0.078 bar and this P saturated pressure at 40 degree centigrade is uh, 0 0.0 0.07375 bar. So, from this we can calculate P A R as 0 0.00425 bar or so this value is 0 0.425 kilo Newton per meter square. We have P A R now R A R is equal to 0 0.287 kilo joule per kg Kelvin temperature 40 degree centigrade which equals to 313 Kelvin volume already calculated that is m dot s into v 2. So, putting this number what we will get is uh, 0 0.425 into 66.66 into 17.2 is equal to m dot a r which needs to be calculated 0 0.287 that is r a r into 313. So, this will give you rate of air leakage as 5.42 kg per second. So, this solves the second problem part. The third part that means we need to calculate the length and number of tubes. So, for that reason we have to bring the overall heat transfer coefficient u a 0 into delta T m. Now, this delta T m is equal to delta T i minus delta T e divided by L n delta T i by delta T e that is equal to 8 minus 2 by L n 8 by 2. So, this number is 4.33 degree centigrade. U is U is given 2560 watt per meter square Kelvin. Q already calculated as 60 m dot s into H2 minus H3 that is 66.66 into 2118.2. Then we can get A0 is equal to 66.66 into 2118.2 divided by U that is 2.56 into 4.33. So, area you can calculate right now is 12738 meter square. Now, this area we know uh, this area uh, is equal to n times pi d 0 into L. So, what we do not know is n length is given no n is not known L is also not known to go do this then we can link this mass flow rate m dot c 
is equal to of mass flow rate of uh, mass flow rate of cooling water that is equal to n times pi by 4 d i square into rho times v w. V w is the water velocity that is given as 1.6 meter per second. Density of water 1000 kg per meter cube and m dot c already evaluated as 5620.5 kg per second. D i is given as 25 uh, uh, d g that is the outer diameter minus twice t that is 25 minus uh, 2.5. So, d i is 22.5 mm. So, in this equation all are known. So, this will give give number of tubes is equal to 5620.5 into 4 divided by uh, or you can say write like this pi by 4 into 0 0.0225 square into 1000 into 1.6. So, number of tubes that is n is equal to 8834. So, number of tubes answer we got. Now, what is not known is length. So, that things we can now calculate L is equal to A0 times n pi d0. A0 is already calculated 1, 2, 7, 3, 8. n is 8834 into pi into d0 that is already given 25 mm 0 0.025. So, this will give you L is equal to 18.35 meter. So, this entire problem discusses about how you need to go for a condenser design. The second problem uh, is a very simple one. So, this emphasizes the important aspect the ratio of circulating water to steam flow rate. So, circulating water is m dot 5 in a direct in a direct contact type condenser and this steam rate is m dot 2. So, here what we uh, need to look at here in this diagram. So, we have one condition at state 5, second condition at state 3 and third condition is at state 2. Okay. So, for a spray condenser if you calculate the mass and energy balance So, you can recall our equations that is m dot 3 is equal to m dot 2 plus m dot 5. So, that is mass balance and m dot 3 h 3 is equal to m dot 2 h 2 plus m dot 5 h 5 that is energy balance. So, these two equations will give you a ratio that is we call this as m dot 5 by m dot 2 that is h 2 minus h 3 divided by h 3 minus h 5. Okay. So, now our main job is that for with the given data we need to find out. So, first thing that condenser operates at 0 0.07 bar. So, at 0 0.07 bar 
we can take saturated pressure table, steam table that is we can say H F G is equal to 2407 kilo joule per kg, T saturated is equal to 40 degree centigrade and then H F at that 40 degree centigrade is 162.2 kilo joule per kg. So, that means we can say H 2 is equal to H F plus X times H F G. H F is 162.2 plus X is 0 0.9 which is 90 percent into 162.2. So, we get H 2 that is condenser uh, exit from the turbine that is 2328.5 kilo joule per kg. So, you know H 2 what is H 3 not H 3 which is at this point it is equal to H F at 40 degree centigrade. Already we have calculated 162.2 kilo joule per kg. Next thing H 5, H 5 is at condition here. So, cooling water is at 15 degree centigrade. So, we say H 5 is equal to H F at 15 degree centigrade. So, this value also can be calculated obtained from the steam table and that number is 65.26 kilo joule per kg. Now, after inserting this value we can say get m dot 5 divided by m dot 2 is equal to 2328.5 minus 162.2 divided by 162.2 minus 65.26. So, this ratio becomes now 21.83, which means the circulating water has to be 22 times higher than the steam flow rate, which is quite high for a steam power system. So, this gives you the important concepts and numerical problems based on this lecture today. With this, I conclude this session. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.